Hello, my name is Stephen Bedard. This is the third episode of What the Church Needs to Know About Autism. And as I record this, this is Autism Awareness Month, and I hope that these videos will be helpful, not just for the month of April, but all year round, and that churches would be able to get some useful information from what I have to share. What I want to talk to you about today is the fact that families that are dealing with autism do not trust you. They do not trust the church. They do not trust pastors. How do I know this? Well, I recently wrote a blog post and shared it on a Facebook group for parents who are dealing with autism. And the post was about how well the church is doing with autism awareness. And I was amazed at the responses that I received from that post. And unfortunately, they were almost all negative, that parents had had very bad experiences, that they had been told repeatedly to not come to church, or at least not bring their children with autism to church. One person shared about uh, their child having a meltdown three or four years ago, and they're still going back to the church asking, can our child come back to church? And they're being told, no, they are not allowed, they are not welcome. And this is the story over and over again. Even when no one comes right out and says, uh, don't come to our church, please stay home, leave your child somewhere else, even if they don't do that, Churches have not necessarily been welcoming in terms of their reactions and responses when there's a sound being made. And I understand that it can be uncomfortable when it's really loud. And uh, no one should expect to have a, a child, whether it's with autism or anything else, screaming through the whole service that you can't hear anything. But trust me, parents of children with autism, they don't want that either. And they're not going to bring their children to church if they're going to scream through the whole thing. But people with autism are going to make some noise and that should be okay. There's no reason why that should be a reason to tell families to stay home. In the church where I pastor, there is a young man with autism and I'll tell you that during worship, when I hear him uh, let loose with his uh, nonverbal joy, I just am drawn into God's presence. I really feel like that is true worship and it gets me excited. I'm thankful that the church where I pastor is autism friendly, not just because uh, that I'm the pastor and I have children with autism. My children with autism have ever, never actually been at our church yet, and I'm looking forward to introduce them on one of their visits. But I want you to know that when you are talking to a family dealing with autism, there's already an expectation that uh, churches are not going to be welcoming, that they're not going to be open to having families with autism, that they're going to be afraid of the sounds or the actions or the unpredictability. And so that's something you're going to need to work on. I would encourage you to be prepared for that and to be proactive and to take a strong stand in being welcoming to families with any special needs. I'd encourage you to check out my uh, autism blog, uh, which is uh, church-autism.blogspot.com. And also my regular website, stephenjbedard.com. I also encourage you to check out my book, How to Make Your Church Autism Friendly, which is available on Kindle and in Amazon. I hope that this is helpful for you, and God bless.